Let's talk about the Baltimore Orioles and why they're one of the most exciting and best young teams in the MLB. I'm joined with Matt. All right, everybody, welcome back to TTB Ramage Media. This is going to be the first and not the last uh, MLB video on the channel. wanted to talk about the Baltimore Orioles because they're one of my favorite teams to watch, and I had to bring on uh, one of my good friends, Matt. Matt, do you want to introduce yourself and, and everything that you've been doing recently? Yeah, so uh, basically I do. I did two channels. One of them was with Makana, kind of broad NFL short stuff right now that will probably turn into a lot more than that at Play Action Football. And then baseball-wise, I do Friar Talk, which is a Padres channel, and kind of turning a little bit into like what McConnell is doing, where he's kind of involving a little bit more NFL, a little bit more baseball, stuff like that. But we're going to be talking a little bit more about the overall MLB as well. Um, and actually, like in our most recent episodes, we've talked about the Orioles a little bit. So I told McConnell, I was like, dude, I want to talk about the Orioles. The Orioles are exciting. The Orioles are fun. Um, the Orioles are what every team should strive to do and build their team like like they have and have this insane young core. So I want to talk about them because honestly, because they're super exciting. That's that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, and this this was like the perfect time because the Orioles just took over in the AL East, and not just in the AL East, they've taken over the American League. Now, they are currently, as we're recording this, in the top of the ninth against the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, this will be posted on Friday, so you guys know if they're leading the uh, the AL or not, but they're currently battling it out with their uh, you know division rival. It's going to be a lot of fun to talk about them. We're kind of going to overline three main concepts and just like, one, how good are they right now? You know, is this a team that is contending in not just the American League, not just in the American League East, but for the World Series? Um, because that's not been a question with Baltimore for a very long time is can they win it all? I think it potentially could be. We'll talk about that. Next up, we'll probably talk about the, the trade deadline and, and maybe some targets. I know Matt has a couple of guys that he thinks they should definitely be targeting, but like, should they be buying? Should they be going all in for a season like this or, you know, hold on to those young assets? And then finally, Talking about something that I I would say it is true, but they have the best core in baseball and the best just current startup. If you're picking a team, hey, I want to, you know, looking forward to the next 10 years and I'm just looking at roster, not looking at payroll, not looking at the amount of money that you are willing to spend. What team do you want to have going forward? We're going to talk about all those things. It's going to be a lot of fun, but Matt, you know, just starting off, you know, I know you've watched some Orioles games. I know you've talked about the Orioles recently. What's, what are your just kind of thoughts on the Baltimore Orioles right now as they're kind of getting hot? So I think it's interesting because the two teams that were kind of like when we kind of were like just like in our streams, we're talking about uh, like up and coming teams right in the league. One of them were the Orioles. The other one, the Diamondbacks. And both those teams, when we when we brought them up, we were like, you know, these are teams I feel like they're they're going to be borderline playoff teams. The Orioles were a little bit surprising last year. The Diamondbacks had a good run at the end of the year. You know, they, they kind of each have their young superstar. I think the Orioles have a better young core, definitely. But both of them are, are young teams, good teams. Um, they have some really big pluses in the pitching department. Uh, the Diamondbacks more starters-wise, the Orioles more bullpen-wise. But, you know, you got Adley Rutschman and you got Corbin Carroll. And the Diamondbacks extended him. And it was like, okay, like in the NL West, we knew that the, the Diamondbacks were going to be legit. They were going to be contending. Um, they led the NL West up until about a week ago. Like they, they were leading that division, which is supposed to be one of the best divisions in all of baseball. And then you look at the AL East and the Orioles, that is the best division in all of baseball. And that's why, they, that's why we were kind of like, yeah, they might make it. Maybe there'll be a fifth or sixth kind of team in the wild card. Dude, I mean, they've, blown expectations out of the water you look at their bullpen it is absolutely insane you look at their young core Gunnar Henderson Adley Rushman um Anthony Santander like dude that is it they got a bunch of pop they have really good players um and they're they're gonna keep getting better um we recently at our channel we did a video about the trades I know we're gonna talk about the trades in a second but the thing that's most encouraging about them is they have like every single one of their top prospects is in triple A right now or in double A right now. And they have like a 900 OPS. It's insane. Like they're ready to come up and they're ready to produce right away. And some of the guys have even started to get called up, but 
they have like this insane giant core that's coming up within like one to three years of each other. And they are potentially going to run the AL. So it's super exciting. And I, I think they took a much bigger jump than we were expecting, even though I felt like thinking that the Orioles might be a playoff team heading into the year was like not really a common take. Like most people didn't even think that. So I, I thought we were even like high on the Orioles and we obviously weren't high enough. And that, that also goes to the same with the Diamondbacks as well. Yeah, and I remember talking with you in the offseason just preparing, and we actually talked about the Orioles. We didn't talk about very many teams, but we did have discussions about the Orioles. And I, I wasn't as high on the Orioles. I, I had them finishing fourth in their division. At the same time, I was very high on the division. I thought that the Red Sox were going to be good. I thought that the Blue Jays and obviously the Rays and the Yankees, like I thought all of them were going to be pretty good. But I didn't see the Orioles um, you know, kind of being as strong as they were, especially as early into the year um, as it's been. Because when you look at this team, it still is very young. You know, we saw Adley get called up, you know, late last year. And I mean, that guy, he, he burst onto the scene, you know, in an unbelievable way. I know, Matt, you're a fan of this guy's name, Manny Machado, but Adley's first career hit was a triple. And he was the first Oreo with his first career hit being a triple since Manny Machado. So that just got them excited. You know, I know he's been really good for you guys this year. Um, you know, go good leader. But um, overall, when you're looking at just that guy, Adley Rutschman, there's very few positions in baseball where you look at the guy and you're like, okay, this guy you can build around. And catcher is usually not one of them. It is very rare to find a catcher that you're going to look at as your franchise player. There are, I mean, like you look at the history of baseball and people talk about the best players of all time. What do they say? They say outfielders. They say some first baseman. They say some third baseman. You know, maybe you find a Yankees fan. He says Jeter, but like, come on, let's laugh at that take. Um, I mean, how often are you seeing somebody say Yogi Berra, right? They're not saying catchers. When you look at, oh, the best players of the 21st century, what are they saying? You know, they're saying Mike Trout. They're saying Miguel Cabrera. They're saying Albert Pujols, right? Are they saying, you know, the best catcher of this generation, Buster Posey? No. Nobody talks about Joe Maurer. Nobody talks about Buster Posey. Instead, they talk about the guys that don't play catcher. It's such a hard position to build around. But he has the type of talent. And coming through, you know, he actually went to a high school that's my neighboring town. Coming through Sherwood High School, going to Oregon State, then going to the Baltimore Orioles, and dominating at every single level. National Championship with Oregon State. Comes into the Baltimore Orioles and turns that team around. The Orioles last year were not very good. And all of a sudden they got Adley Rushman. And, you know, I'm assuming a lot of the people watching were Orioles are Orioles fans watching last year down the stretch. It was like, you, they were the scariest team to face. <laughs> like you were terrified to face them. Like they were just beating everybody down the stretch because they got Adley and he just transformed how good that team was. And then you pair him with what some people say is the prospect of the generation and holiday. Um, and then you also have Henderson. Like that infield, as well as outfield, is going to be set. They don't have the pitching right now, but pitching can be acquired. The most important thing is they have the talent to acquire, you know, either star players or young players with a lot of assets. Because a lot of teams, what they have in their in their farm system and their prospects, it's a lot of pitchers, right? They have a lot of them that they're trying to build up and maybe they bring them in eventually as bullpen pieces. Maybe they bring them in, um, you know, to try and see how they do in the major league level. The Orioles top prospects are all positional players. <laughs> I, I want to say it's their top eight. I'll confirm it right now. Their top. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Their top eight players are all positional players. You can't get all of them on your roster. You are going to have to deal some of them. And what can you deal them for? None other than pitchers. None other than the players that you need to take your team from a good offensive team, which can dominate the regular season, to a postseason team that is pitching to lead them past those tough teams like we've seen the Astros do against teams without good pitching. And that's why the Astros have run the American League for the last, I don't know, five years, maybe since they started banging drums. I don't know. Maybe that's something to do with it, but. What do you what do you think about like that take, Matt, of just about Adley Rushman? Can can you build around him as a franchise player? Because it's very rare. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you definitely can, but 
I think one thing that's interesting when you bring all this up is like, look around the league and look at the teams that become like these up and coming teams. I already brought up the Diamondbacks with Corbin Carroll, right? What about this year? Ellie De La Cruz. The Reds are straight ass. Horrible. They bring him up and they rip like, what was it like? 12 out of 15 or something. They, they had like some ridiculous wins. They might have won 13 straight and then they played the Braves. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. It was like they played yeah. really well, like when they brought him up and, and he's cooled down a little bit. But like when you bring in these like young stars, it's like in, extremely like reinvigorating to a lot of teams. Look at, look at the Padres, dude. The Padres, the, when the Padres started like playing well and obviously they're, they're having a, a rough year. All right. I'm, I'm very aware of this. <laughs> um, but I mean, they've had, less success than you would think which how much they get talked about but it comes from fernando tatis like that was the turning point of the franchise like very clearly like very Mm -hmm. very clearly so it's interesting when you see that and like adley rushman is one of those guys but there's also Gunnar henderson there jackson holiday is the number one pick the number one prospect um and he should be up potentially next year that's what his eta is they're two and three prospects, Colton Kowser and Jordan Westberg. Those guys are already – I mean, I don't know if they're in the MLB right now, but they've played in the MLB this season. Um, Colton Kowser is like – I think he's like the 12th or 13th prospect, I mean, depending on what list you look. But he's pretty typically a top 15 prospect. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, it's not – it's like they have like complimentary guys that are also really good. You just start tossing all these prospects. It's crazy. So I definitely agree with you. Um, and another thing is you brought up the pitching, right? Oh, you want to trade for pitching? Well, the thing that's interesting is when you call up pitchers in the league, like they they usually struggle at first, and they usually can't get stretched out, and you're really not going to be able to rely on them for a full season. Um, and now the the Orioles are in a good spot because they have top 100 prospects. Like for instance, a guy that we talked about on our, our recent episode talking about Blake Snell. Like we talked about Blake Snell to the Orioles a ton. Like we think it's. We think it's a good fit if the Potters decide to move on from him. Like the Orioles make the most sense. And you look at the Orioles' top prospects, uh, Colby Mayo is their seventh prospect. He's a top 100 guy. He's like 80, 90th kind of guy. He's, he's a great fit for them because he's, he's a third baseman, but you could convert him to first base if you're the Padres. He could become at your first base kind of like a power bat. It's a really good pickup for them. That's not that big of a loss for the Orioles. They already got their left side of the infield figured out. Like they have the ability to go and make different moves for guys and go get veteran pitching to pair with the super young core. And and that's what you want to do. If you look at like a lot of teams, that's typically, that's typically what works. That's typically what wins championships is you have these young superstars because they're able to just come up and like, I mean, you guys all saw Adley Rushman last year. He comes up and he's immediately a monster. Gunnar Henderson's already has over 800 OPS. Like, guys can come in and produce right away at the plate. And you see that a lot more than you do on the pitching end. So I, I think that's a great way to kind of look at it too. Yeah. And I mean, like you want to talk about being able to come up and, and play right away. Corbin Carroll's the best example. Corbin Carroll was a starting outfielder as a rookie in the all-star game. Um, not as a, not as an injury substitute. He was just a starter, which is incredibly rare and difficult to do. So got to give him shout outs to that. Braves just, lost to the Diamondbacks, so I just had to watch Cormac Carroll run all over my team. But, uh, (laughs) you know, you're looking at these guys, and you have these outfielders, infielders, shortstop, second base, and you're looking at pitching. And that's obviously been a struggle, but that's what wins you in the playoffs. You know, that's how you're able to get through these tough tough games, these tough matchups, when you're going up against the New York Yankees – and they have Aaron Judge, or you're going against the Houston Astros, and you're pitching against Jordan Alvarez, you got to have someone for at least a game that can hold them in check because you don't want to get just railed in a game and be out of it because your pitching was unable to perform because you were relying on a rookie. And I speak from experience because last year, the number two rookie of the year vote getter was Spencer Strider. Spencer Strider started game seven against the Phillies started game seven and he got railed as a rookie. He got completely destroyed. And it was like, Oh no, like they couldn't play. And Spencer Strider was an unbelievable rookie, but he wasn't ready for that moment. And you know, that's not me trying to hold anything against him. He's a rookie. It happens. I'm over it, but relying on rookie pitching is very tough. And I think they're in a position, I think they've done such a great job at rebuilding. And I I don't want to 
slander the Cubs because my boy Mike likes the Cubs. I think they did an awful thing last year and they tried to spend a bunch of money in free agency while also trying to rebuild. And now once again, they're going into the trade deadline, trying to sell all their players. Like, why are you giving a bunch of money to, to Dansby Swanson? Like while you're also trying to rebuild, um, I, it made no sense. And now they're trying to sell and guess who they're trying to sell their ace pitcher who is in the Cy Young award race, who they will probably want to deal to an AL team that has young assets so that they can build up their bullpen. I mean, there are, I mean, the Orioles could easily go out and snag two starting pitchers and become the best team in baseball and just be like, Oh yeah, we traded our, you know, number five, seven and, and, and four prospect. And they would still have the best farm system in baseball after trading all of those guys. You'd be like, Oh, who'd you add? Blake Snell and, and Marcus Stroman. We have now, we now have two aces for the playoffs alongside a very good young roster. No, and it's also it's also interesting to see what you'd want to do. I, another name that pops up, I mean, obviously Blake Snell is the big one. I think he's a great fit. Stroman as well. I'm, I'm going to look into Stroman's contract here in a second because I'm pretty sure he has some control. Uh, but Jordan Montgomery on the Cardinals. The Cardinals are clearly selling. Um, that, that That's another name. Yeah. He did get hurt a little while back, but it was something minor. I don't even – he might have already came back, but he should, he should be totally fine. So those are the three names in the NL. I, I don't think that – you don't really see that many like, like you would. I guess there's the dude on the the Tigers that could potentially get trained uh, traded. I, I forget his name. Um, I forget. But like, you're not gonna see like it'd be very unlikely to see like Otani traded, especially like to an AL team. You know what I mean? Like you just don't really see yeah. it that often. Um, and a lot of the teams that are good and have good pitching are in the race with the Orioles, so they don't want to do that. Yeah. Um. So I think that those are the three names if you're looking at starting pitching that you'd potentially go after. I would guess that Stroman would probably be the most expensive of those threes because I'm pretty sure he has some control. Montgomery is pretty good. Snell, Snell and Montgomery are probably relatively the same. Um, if I'm in, I'm going for Snell because he might even be the cheapest out of those three. Yeah. And Blake Snell, like, Blake Snell also has like a lot of playoff experience. His stuff plays in the playoffs. And the big downside with Blake Snell is that he usually goes like five or six innings. Well, good thing you got the bullpen you do to, to rock with him. Because <laughs> guess what's happening game one? You're winning. You're, you're, you're probably going two or less. The other team's probably scoring two or less against you because you have Blake Snell going for five or six, and then it's like automatic after that. So I, I love the idea of them going after Blake Snell, and I don't think that it would be like anything crazy. They could give up a couple of their you know, pretty good prospects for him. And they could also keep him. They could also extend him. They could do the same thing with Jordan Montgomery. They could hang on to Strowman. So I think they're in a spot where, like you said, they could even trade for two arms. Um, they also didn't they just trade for someone too? Like not like a like a high. Yeah, they did. They, they did just trade, trade for someone, someone right? Um, like two days ago. Yeah, I so, can't pronounce his name though. I remember reading it. Yeah, and he's like a he's like a reclamation project as well. So it's not like a yeah. guy you're like, all right, we're gonna put him into our playoff rotation. He's set, but. They're in a great spot to do that, so I, I think that's what I think that's what they got to do. I, I think, and maybe people are like, "Oh, we should wait." Like, we should, dude. You you guys are good, man. Like, go for it. Like, go for it. You you if you add if you don't add pitching, you're going to lose in the playoffs because of the pitching. That that's kind of just the reality of it. If you do add pitching, you got a really good shot. Yeah, and the other benefit is when you look at the postseason and what the postseason has been last year, what team's been winning the Astros, who did they have Justin Verlander? Well, the Astros got rid of Verlander. All right. But you know, he goes over to the national league and then the national league's best pitcher goes over to the American league. And you're like, Oh, okay. So we didn't get rid of anybody, but now DeGrom is hurt. And so it's like, Oh, there's now one less, truly elite like superstar pitcher in the american league and so i just pulled up the american league cy young odds just to kind of look it over you've got mcclanahan i i you know he's the favorite out of tampa bay he's been very good obviously the rays have been very good at least baltimore faces him um that's a benefit you got framber valdez with the astros very good Gaussman with the blue jays garrett cole with the yankees spoiler alert a lot of al east teams are in here why they're good um Luis Castillo uh with the Mariners Nathan Avaldi with the Rangers and then you got Shohei who 
let's be honest, you're not going to face Shohei in the playoffs. Sorry, Angels fans. Um, or whatever team's trades for him because he's going to be in the NL if he gets traded. Uh, and then you got Joe Ryan and Sonny Gray with the Twins. But I'm not too worried about facing the Twins in the playoffs, mostly because they have no offense and they haven't won, what is it, 20 consecutive playoff game losses or 19? I'm not worried. I'm pretty sure like I'm pretty sure like three quarters of those are against the Yankees, though. Just to, to put it out there, they literally like it's like a routine. <laughs> they make the playoffs and lose to the Yankees. <laughs> uh, not, not lose. They get swept. Yeah, they get swept <laughs> by the Yankees. Yeah, swept Very by funny. the Yankees every year. Um, but you know they're up there. You know you're not facing any teams that are that are going to go crazy. And the hope is you get to miss that first round matchup. I think that would be massive. Like they're they're leading in the American League right now. Well, let's make sure they're up in the tenth inning. Okay, so they are leading in the American League. If you get that, you know that first buy. Think of the team that you won't have to play. Right, you look at the wild card. The wild card teams right now are the Rays, the Blue Jays, and the Astros. Those are the teams fighting for it. Every single one of those guys had a top five Cy Young player. <laughs> Every single one of those teams, they had top five Cy Young. You got McClanahan. You have Valdez. You have um, – now I'm blanking on who the uh, the Blue Jays pitcher was. Uh, but you have all those guys. It's like, okay, you're going to have to face them. And you don't have an ace in a quick series. That's very difficult to win a series when you don't have an ace. If you don't get that by. Like it's not like yes, the seven game series it's huge for, but the seven game series of bullpen can can drastically help with that. When you're playing a short series and you go up against three aces or two aces and you don't have one, what are you doing? You got no chance. And and I'd also say too, for another reason, like to be like a pro, like kind of heavy buyer, like being able to like sell like off some of your prospect capital is like one, one you've kind of proven, and I get that they've had like high draft picks and stuff. You know, that's how a lot of these guys are coming in. You have two, because pretty sure Adley Rushman went number one. Adley was one. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I'd be very surprised if he wasn't. Um, and Holiday was one. So, I mean, you had two very clear, like good number one overall picks, but like, you still built up a farm like this. Like, you have a really good front office. And in the playoffs, your bullpen matters a lot more. Like, you're bringing up the starters matter, like, of course. But your bullpen matters a lot more. Bullpen, a a baseball team's bullpen is so volatile. So, like, it doesn't, in two years, their bullpen might not look the same. Like, it's just not. Yeah. Like, guys will fall off. Guys will get figured out. You have a bullpen that you can really bank on this year. So, like, go for it, man. Also, like, think about what it does for the organization if they go out there. Like, what's the difference? Like, because obviously the future is bright either way, right? But what's the difference if you go out there and you get bounced in the first round versus you go to the, the you know the ALCS? Like obviously you're, you're obviously you're shooting for a World Series, but like you win two series or one series, I guess, because they're probably gonna buy. Maybe um, that that's a lot bigger. Like that that it's something to build upon. Like that's something to to get people like get people showing up in the stadium, get people pumped. Potentially getting the Orioles to actually spend some more money, like their yeah. I don't their ownership to spend some more money, and like feel like, hey, we can invest a lot into this. Like this is going to work out well. So, I think you got to go for it, man. Yeah, I I agree. I think I think this is a year where you know Judge missed so much time. It's going to be tough. You know, Shohei's not going to be playing in the playoffs. You don't have Degrom. You're going to be able to go after the pennant at least. And if you get to the World Series, you're going to go up again. You know, obviously there's good teams in the NL. Hopefully the Braves are there, but the Braves play in Atlanta and they're not very known for postseason success. So not going to be able to bank on that at all. So it'll probably be the Dodgers or something like that. And anything can happen in when you get to that final series. But the American League is open this year and – I think you have to take that chance with a young core that is trying to set a precedent for a new era. I mean, you just renovated the stadium. Like you have these number one overall picks go after it, go crazy, try and win because you see it in, in not just the, the MLB, but in all sports, 
Matt, I loved how you brought up, you know, what is going to the, you know, ALCS versus, you know, getting bounced in the wild card round do for you. I mean, those guys just, they just learn to love winning. And that's what they're trying to build from the ground up, from winning in the, you know, the minor systems all the way up through their MLB teams. I mean, they, they go out and they draft a guy that, that won the College World Series in Adley Rushman. And they are just trying to build that culture and let these young guys win. Because if you don't win, you're going to get content in not winning. You know, you see you see a guy who's the greatest player of our generation. His name is Mike Trout. You know what Mike Trout said to Mookie Betts in the World Baseball Classic? He said, is this what the playoffs feel like? That's what he said. Because Mike Trout, he hasn't been able to do I mean- it. I'm not trying to blame him. I mean, I'll just put it out there since apparently I'm, I've been to more uh, postseason events than Mike Trout, I guess. But, I mean, I went to the World Baseball Classic, right? And I went to two games for the Padres Mets last year. They don't compare. <laughs> that should not be a question that's being asked. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's just something where when you're young and you have these teams – and, you know, maybe maybe an NFL example is a team like the, I don't know, the Washington Commanders, right? Where three years ago, they were a young team, right? They had, you know, Chase Young's coming in. You know, probably most people watching this are Ravens fans, but maybe, you know, D.C. area. Um, you know, you have Chase Young. You have the best D-line in, in, in football. And everyone was like, wow, this team took over. They win their division. They go up against Tom Brady. Could you imagine if they won that game? How different their team would end up being? I mean, I don't know. I mean, now, speaking of commanders, they just got sold today. So, hey. That's now, true. Now new the era. Future, the future is bright again. <laughs> That's true. It's a new era for them. Like, it's just like you get all these players and they just all of a sudden they start to feel, I don't know if sorry is, is the right word, but it's just like they just aren't winning. And it feels like when guys come into the league and their team is winning – they are just so much happier in the league, right? How happy are, are, are rookies that get drafted to the Kansas City Chiefs? It's great. They're pretty stoked. I mean, you, okay, sorry to interrupt, but, dude, the Padres are kind of in a spot like that right now. They've yeah. traded so much of their farm. What happens if if Juan Soto walks and they don't have a farm? Like it, it's not like they're going to be, like, in the cellar, but, like, yeah, it's not as bright as – 2020 in the COVID season when they're coming up and they're like the second best record in the NL and they don't even have any pitching. And then they have all of these prospects. They have the best rated farm. They have Fernando Tatis just came onto the scene, you know, Machado's a beast, like everything like that. And now they do some moves and they trade for some veterans and do X, Y, and Z. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, now you're old. You have a, you're the third highest payroll. And it's like, now it's a little bit scary. And now it's like the pressure's really on. That's the thing. That's the other thing. Like you don't win, then the pressure gets on a lot more. And they they even had a deep playoff run last year, but it's like, it's, it's the same thing. Like it's, it's, and, yeah. and I don't think, I think the organ, the Orioles organization is better. So I don't think that they're going to do something like that. I think they're a lot more like frugal with their players and stuff. They're not just going to like burn them and stuff. And like, but it's still like when you, when you have a chance to win, like, it's hard because like you also see teams like the Dodgers that are like yeah the Dodgers are always in it like they're in a they're in a reset year and they're in first place but it's like that's an elite organization I mean the Rays have kind of become that as well the yeah. Rays are really good they're really good at staying competitive so like yeah you could do that but like I still think there is value in like going for it and like taking a big swing look at the Braves that's how they won the World Series. They were a team that were that was in a losing streak and they go out to the trade deadline and they make they make three big moves and one of them i didn't think was big they traded for eddie rosario and it was like okay this guy's not really gonna play but they lost to cunha it did not look good for the for the braves and then they trade for eddie rosario and it's like okay this guy's not gonna play they go after adam dunn or not adam dunn (laughs) wrong outfielder um they go after ozuna not ozuna why am i but wow they go after jock peterson um and they go into the playoffs and all of a sudden who were the guys that carried them through the playoffs? They, they got Soler as well. It was all the guys that they traded for. The NLCS, Eddie Rosario comes in and puts on one of the great, probably the greatest 
postseason series of all time. He put up the most home runs, tied for the most home runs ever in a postseason series, tied for the most hits ever in a postseason series in, in NL history. Oh, spoiler alert, it was only in six games. He had less games than everyone else that had you know the same amount. They played seven. And then you get to the World Series, and you go, okay, what's going on here? And you get Solaire, go up, and he just cranks a home run in the in game five and they're able to win off of a like three run home run early in the game and they're able to separate themselves jock peterson played very well in the in the early games and it's just like oh they went all in and they let most of them walk immediately after because they didn't you know you don't have to make a crazy splash for for it to be going all in you can just make a couple of minor moves like you know obviously going truly going all in is trading for Shohei on a lease. You trade for Snell, you trade for Stroman, and you sell everything? That's not what we're saying to do. Make a couple of minor moves for people. Like, if they trade for Blake Snell, yes, it will be talked about, but it won't get national media attention. People aren't going to be like, the oh, all of a sudden the Baltimore Orioles are, are, you know, they're going all in, they're doing all this. But people that, that know Blake Snell's game and people that, you know, are really following the MLB, they're going to be like, oh, wow. That's a really good move, but it's not going to go crazy. Everyone's not going to start overhyping him because of it. Do moves like that where people are just like, okay, okay. They're making some moves and it'll be able to turn into something where we could absolutely see them playing in the world series. And, you know, when you have young guys, a lot of the time they, they ride a lot of momentum and Baltimore sports fans are very passionate I mean, Camden Yards will be going absolutely wild if the Baltimore Orioles are in the World Series. I know that for a fact. <laughs> and so having all those young guys and having a winning culture would just be unreal. Even if they don't win at all, it would be worth it just to get them that, that taste. The Braves blew a 3-1 lead in the NLCS the year before they won the World Series. And they were pissed. I think a lot of people forget that about that Atlanta Braves team. Was they lost. Baltimore fans, you want to know something? The year before they won their last Super Bowl, they choked to the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship game off of a dropped touchdown and then a missed field goal. Back to back. What did they do the next year? They went out and won the Super Bowl. So if they go out, you know, quote unquote, not all out, but they go for it and they don't win, but it gives them a taste it could still work out in the end. And those young guys, and they could pair them up with, you know, a solid veteran signing. This team is special. And and the way that they're built, they're they're ready to become, you know, kind of the next force, the next giant in maybe not even just the the American League, but all of baseball, because they could be a very scary team. And in a division with the Yankees and the Red Sox and the Rays, they're probably the best team currently and they have the best future. hundred <laughs> percent. They definitely do. They're excited, man. I'm excited to see their postseason. It's going to be sweet. Yeah. It, watching that, watching the AL postseason is going to be a lot of fun. I am tired of watching Astros Yankees. I'm sorry. I'm just saying, I think that's a hot take, but I am tired of watching Astros Yankees in the ALCS and watching the Yankees completely lose it every single time it's not really even competitive it hasn't been for a while <laughs> it's like it's so bad i don't know why it's like i feel like the yankees half the time are a better team and then they just they just can't do it they just can't play the astros but matt do you have anything else you want to add in on the the baltimore orioles i uh, take the swing at the trade deadline it's worth it definitely think it's worth it uh, from a that's Padres it. fan wanting to get your young prospects, that's exactly what he's going to say. But I'm going to agree with him. I think they should take this thing, go after a Blake Snell, go after a Marcus Stroman, and, and go after this thing because I think they do have a shot. Everyone, thank you all so much for watching this. Going to be putting out more MLB, going to be putting out more NBA, and of course, more Ravens and NFL content. So make sure to stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe. Let us know your thoughts on the Baltimore Orioles and what they should do. And I'll see all of you again next time. <laughs>